acknowledgement for this module which was created by our spa members dr ganesh dr riyaj and dr mb jay kumar thank you thank you sir the yeah, thank you so much sir it was very nice and uh, very nice to hear it again we have learned yeah. so much in this regard uh, regarding congenital hypothyroidism so um, uh, moving on to our next talk if we can have dr a maithili ma'am uh she will be speaking on neonatal diabetes so i think we can also uh, invite dr anush chairperson uh he'll be inviting dr me dr anush are you are there yeah yeah uh, good evening sir i was there yeah please please introduce our next speaker yeah. dr anush is, uh, has done his dm endo from scpgi and presently working as assistant professor at uh, kgmc lucknow First of all, I congratulate my students for organizing this uh, first ever uh, Hormone India conference. Uh, topic for the uh, the session was uh, is uh, neonatal diabetes, and uh, the speaker is Dr. A. Maithili Nam. Uh, she is a consultant endocrinologist, uh, our uh, from the Shak Patnam, the former professor of endocrinology in the uh, Nandra Medical College, Shak Patnam. She is a visiting faculty at uh, Jams Medical College, uh, uh, Sita Kulam. And uh, founder, secretary, and the Diabetic Child uh, Society in Chhatpur. Present, uh, presently, president elect of AP uh, RSSDA for 2022 and 2023. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you for the kind introduction. I would like to congratulate the team of Harmon India for the wonderful conference. and i thank them for inviting me dr mayur and uh, dr harsha for the kind invitation so i am asked to speak on neonatal diabetes so this topic is getting important today the reasons are that number one we are seeing more number of cases secondly we have a better understanding thirdly genetic testing is available and beyond all this it is a rewarding diagnosis because a good number of them respond to sulfalan ureas so this is rare monogenic it is non autoimmune and the diagnosis is in the first 6 months of life however the testing it may be considered diagnosis may be considered even a hello ma'am sorry to interrupt but your slide is not moving it is moving for me can i share your slide yeah yeah please am i audible yes you are audible yeah please proceed no next slide next so when do we suspect neonatal diabetes this is especially in babies uh, where there is a history of iugr in utero or at birth and then postnatally there is a failure to thrive despite a good adequate intake associated with copious urine output and most important is it is has to be persistent after exclusion of other causes of neonatal hyperglycemia in the first week of life next so you know the diagram this is a very important diagram which shows uh, the beta cell and the regulation of insulin secretion in the beta cell if you see on the right half of the diagram you can see the this is the nutrient induced insulin secretion so in response to glucose glucose at the level of the beta cell taken up by the glut 2 it is phosphorylated by the key enzyme glucokinase and the subsequent oxidation generates atp so this closes the potassium atp sensitive potassium channel and then opens the calcium channel leading to insulin secretion so this is the nutrient mediated insulin secretion so the key players here as you see is number one is glucokinase and then secondly the two important genes which regulate the potassium channel that is the kcng11 and the abcc8 genes so a genetic disorder of these genes or the genetic disorder of the glucokinase are commonly associated with neonatal diabetes and to the left of the diagram if you see this is the basal insulin secretion so the basal insulin secretion is independent of atp 
it is there are so many transcription factors which are associated with the basal insulin secretion that they turn on the genes that produce insulin and a defect of all these transcription factors can be associated with neonatal diabetes then another important area is a genetic disorder of insulin synthesis so the insulin gene if it is defective there is an insulin defective uh, synthesis defect and that is associated with neonatal diabetes finally there is an epigenetic disorder of the beta cell which is also associated with neonatal diabetes so the slide very aptly summarizes the common causes which are depicted in blue these are the common causes of neonatal diabetes next slide please so this neonatal diabetes is classified next slide please so it is classified into three different forms most common is the permanent which is seen in the center and to the right is the syndromes which are associated with neonatal diabetes left is the transient neonatal diabetes so i will just uh, briefly speak about each of these three, the permanent then the transient and the syndromes in the subsequent slides next so indian data uh, from uh, a uh, dr mohan and uh, this article is published in the journal of pediatric endocrinology diabetes a very good review article and it is shown that transient is less common in india permanent is 60 to 70% syndromes are quite common in india next so i will uh, first discuss about the permanent neonatal diabetes so this is again broadly to simplify it is either due to reduced beta cell function or there is a reduced beta cell mass or there is an increase in the beta cell destruction so the reduction in the beta cell function as i have already shown is because of the two genes that are defective which are responsible for regulating the potassium channel and then of course the glucokinase mutation beta cell mass can be reduced because of a defect in these various uh, genes there is can be an apoptosis of the beta cells genetically and the most common one is the insulin gene mutation followed by the gene EIF2AK3 which is the gene implicated in the uh, Walcott Robinson syndrome so next so most common cause of neonatal diabetes is the KCNG11 and the ABCC8 mutations so this is again the diagram which shows the atp sensitive potassium channel so this channel at the level of the beta cell is constituted by the sulfonylurea receptor 1 and the potassium inverted rectifier 6.2 so these two combine together and they form a large hetero octameric complex and this uh, uh, ins insulin is secreted in response to an atp uh, um, change which occurs because of glucose oxidation so the kr 6.2 is coded by the gene kcnj11 and the sur1 is coded by the gene abcc8 so the channel is normally it is open and uh, next so when there is an activating mutation of the kcnj11 or the abcc8 so this prevents the closure of the potassium channel in response to increased atp and as i already said this is the most common cause of permanent diabetes and the, also for 25% of transient neonatal diabetes occurs because of these mutations so the channels are present in brain nerves and muscles so there could be a, a severe defect of this uh, potassium channel you would find a um, defect in these organs too so that is the reason why 20% of patients with the kcnj11 mutations they have associated neurological problems next so what is the difference between the two so the kcnj11 uh, uh, mutation is a commoner cause of neonatal diabetes when compared to the abcc8 the abcc8 is in fact the loss of function mutation of this gene is responsible is more common for congenital hyperinsulinism which will be discussed by the other speaker and these mutations the other terminology that is given is this is the neonatal diabetes which is responsive to sulfonylurea so they present very early in life marked hyperglycemia ketosis undetectable c peptide 
absence of anti, uh, autoimmune markers. 20% as I said have the neurological abnormalities and this is what is called the Dent syndrome associated with developmental delay and epilepsy. The inheritance, it is spontaneous, it can be autosomal dominant or recessive. Once they're treated adequately, they have a very good catch-up growth and weight and height normalized by a mean of 9.3 years. So this is what is rewarding about the, this particular disorder. Next. So let me present a case here. So this is a uh, this is not my case. I have drawn it from a book. This is an 18-year-old female from rural area. She was referred for management of type 1 diabetes. She was diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 3 months and takes pre-mixed insulin 30-70 twice daily, rarely monitors glucose. She has had 5 episodes of severe hypoglycemia in the past. She's a single child. No family history of diabetes. So when evaluated now, her A1C was 8.5, GAD was negative, C-peptide negative, and a genetic testing for the KCNJ11 gene mutation was positive. Next. So, you know, this is what is why I wanted to present this, to show that the delay can be so much for neonatal diabetes. And that is uh, the case which responds to sulfonylureas. Well, this is our own case, which we saw in Vishakapatnam, maybe, you know, around uh, the six or seven years back. Uh, this is a five-month-old child admitted for gastroenteritis with a blood glucose of 550 milligrams per deciliter. Ketones were negative. Born to non-consanguineous parents, birth weight was 2.5. There's a history of right focal seizures at the age of one and a half months, and the child was started on anti-epileptics. History of developmental delay and the present birth weight was 4.5 kgs. So our post graduates made a diagnosis of probably this is Dent syndrome. However, we could not do a genetic analysis. This was some eight or nine years back. So again, this is another case where this responds to sulfonylureas. Next. So I just wanted to present two cases of the um, KCNJ11 gene mutations. So how do we transit these uh, children from insulin to oral sulfonylureas? So very a very good landmark paper published in uh, New England Journal by Pearson et al. They looked at 49 children with neonatal diabetes. And then next. So the, what they found out was of these 49 consecutive patients who received appropriate doses of sulfonylureas, majority of them responded to sulfonylureas. Next, 90% these were successfully discontinued in insulin after receiving sulfonylureas. Their A1C levels improved from 8.1 to 6.4%, and this was sustained for one year. Sulfonylurea treatment increased insulin secretion, and this was more with oral insulin, and exogenous glucagon increased insulin secretion in the presence of sulfonylureas. So this was very encouraging, and following this, I think, next came the therapy of sulfonylurea, which was approved by uh, as a, one of the landmark uh, treatment for neonatal diabetes. So though insulin is given as the immediate choice for metabolic control, once the diagnosis is established, sulfonylureas are effective in a good number of patients. And the sulfonylurea chosen is glubinclamide probably because it, it crosses the blood-brain barrier at a dose of 0.45 milligrams per kg per day to 1.5 milligrams per kg per day, a very higher dose when compared to what is used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Side effects are quite rare. Hypoglycemia and weight gain are really not common because, you know, the, with, the, with these drugs in neonatal diabetes compared to adult onset type 2 diabetes. Next. So this is the commonest. Now, the other uh, insulin gene mutation can also produce permanent. It can also produce transient in a good number of patients. So when there is an insulin gene mutation, there, are mis there is a misfolding of the precursors, which leads to ER stress and beta cell apoptosis. This is autosomal dominant, small for gestational age. And remember, the treatment is only insulin in this particular case. This is a very strong mimicker of type 1 diabetes. Next. So very rarely, we can see the glucokinase uh, um, gene mutation as a neonatal diabetes. So this is uh, uh, the rate-limiting enzyme in the glycolysis. It is expressed in beta cells and other organs. We are aware that the heterozygous loss of function mutation is MODI2. The homozygous one produces permanent neonatal diabetes, which is uh, lethal in the first week of life if untreated. Next. 
less common forms there are still other common uh, un, um, rare forms of uh, permanent diabetes which occur because of an abnormal pancreatic development and there are these are all the different defects which can take place next so with this i think i completed permanent neonatal diabetes a word about transient neonatal diabetes it is called transient but remember it is a remitting relapsing type of neonatal diabetes and then it 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 remits but then it recurs in later life again the most common cause of transient neonatal diabetes is the chromosome 6q24 abnormalities 68% and the other causes of transient neonatal diabetes are the same as that of uh, the permanent diabetes that is the abcc8 the kcnj11 and very rarely hnf1 beta which is responsible for the heterozygous mutation is mamudi5 the homozygous mutation can present as a transient neonatal diabetes next so a word about the 6q24 related transient neonatal diabetes so what happens is this is a epigenetic disorder there is a defect in the genome imprinting so in this particular uh, transient diabetes what you can see is there is an over expression of certain genes which are responsible for uh, um, inhibiting the insulin secretion so this is the normal uh, uh, the six chromosome so one copy is from the father and one copy is from the mother so these genes are normally they uh, they are silenced when there is a methylation at the level of the end in the maternal chromosome now when this methylation is absent that can produce transient neonatal diabetes there is no over expression of genes and the genes when there is a paternal over expression you like you know uniparental trisomy of the chromosome 6 or when there is a paternal duplication this also produces uh, transient neonatal diabetes next so we have not seen this case and the clinical features are very severe hyperglycemia in the first week again uh, insulin is required for treatment they are quite sensitive to insulin and if there is a remission they need a reduction in the dose recurrence takes place at a later age of 14 years and in some cases hyperglycemia may be intermittent and seen only in time of stress a very important uh, extra pancreatic finding is macroglossia and umbilical hernia next um as I, we have finished the other causes and uh, hnf1 beta again hetero homozygous mutation can produce uh, transient neonatal diabetes the clue is uh, the renal cyst in this particular disorder next now syndromes which produce uh, neonatal diabetes so we have so many syndromes have been identified i would not take you into the details of this but then the most common syndrome is the is the volcker rallison syndrome and this is associated with uh, skeletal anomalies renal anomalies uh, and uh, this is the commonest form quite a good number of cases have been reported in india and then of course we have ipex syndrome and the others next next slide so we have uh, uh, so many syndromes i would like to uh, describe our own experience with one uh, uh, gene that is the nkx2 next slide so we had a case of this uh, particular mutation next slide next slide so this was our case of a 6 month old female who uh, presented with fever and a random blood glucose was found to be 578 mg she had ketonuria acidosis so we did an evaluation at the department and she had a low birth weight there was there was neonatal sepsis developmental delay her a1c was 13 gad antibodies were negative she had bilateral optic partial optic atrophy she had normal brain evoked response auditory and there was a, some mri findings of hypoxic sequelae the child was treated for uh, dka and after stabilization we switched her to twice daily glarchi unfortunately she was lost for follow up and a couple of months back she succumbed next so we uh, sent the genetic analysis of this particular case to madras uh, diabetes research foundation next so what we found was uh, next slide please so we found that there was an nkx2 uh, mutation in this particular case next again this doesn't respond to sulfonylurea and has a bad prognosis well some more syndromes of uh, of neonatal diabetes are again depicted so the list is increasing uh, day by day next so finally having uh, finished the three types of neonatal diabetes a word about management considerations so in the neonate it is very difficult to manage 
the, you have to a, with a DKI presentation, the fluid electrolyte disturbances have to be taken care of, and the physiological glucose infusion rate is around uh, six to twelve milligram per kg per minute. Then for DKA, the insulin infusion rate, if you see compared to adults, it is much lower, 0 0.02 units or to 0 0.05 units per kg per hour. Now, when the child is taking oral feeds, the ideal way to manage would be an insulin pump. However, it is again not affordable for majority of our children. MDI is what we routinely use, a short-acting insulin, which is given at 0.1 to 0.15 unit per kg per dose. And if you are choosing the child is stable, you can choose a long-acting at a dose of 0.2 to 0.4 units per kg per day of Lantus insulin, a glargin insulin. Analogs are usually preferable in unit. And what is important is the dilution has to be done at a rate of 1 is to 10 to provide the lower required amounts. So the dilution is very easy. There is flexibility. That is why pump is very easy in managing neonatal diabetes. Next. Now, a very good algorithm has been uh, uh, suggested for considering sulfonylurea trial. So any neonatal diabetes below six months, first thing is establish euglycemia. An urgent genetic testing is what is required. Pending the results, most important is get an imaging to rule out pancreatic hypoplasia or agenesis and also look for syndromic features. If these are absent, you can consider an empiric trial of sulfonylurea. It could be successful or if it is unsuccessful, again, you wait for the result. Again, you, you can treat based on the genetic test. Next. So this is the my last slide. Next. So the take home message is uh, very important is suspect neonatal diabetes. If someone says I've had diabetes shortly after birth and, and there's a strong family history of diabetes. Do genetic testing in neonatal diabetes less than six months of age. The four important genes are the 6Q24 abnormality, KCNG11, ABCC8 and insulin gene mutation. Early diagnosis and treatment definitely is important. It improves the outcomes. And pathogenic variants in the KCNJ11 gene, they respond to sulfonylureas. So this is again, uh, you know, in short, my presentation about uh, neonatal diabetes. And I thank all of you for uh, listening to me. Once again, my good wishes to Harmon India for a bright future. And uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity.